In this video, we will look at how to set up an intelligent agent in Unity ML Agents. This continues from my previous video on ML Agents concepts. This video should stand alone, but if you would like more on the concepts and background, check out that earlier video. My goal is to develop intelligent NPCs using ML Agents and to show how to do that in these videos. In this video, we will go over the basics of setting up any agent using ML Agents, including simple ones that aren't yet humanoid. To recap, in the last video, we looked at this diagram for reinforcement learning. You have an intelligent agent that perceives its environment, makes a decision, acts upon the environment, and the process repeats. In deep reinforcement learning, which is what Unity ML Agents is based on, the decision is made using a deep neural network. Also in the last video, we looked at this structure for any reinforcement learning problem, where we have an agent that has a goal and rewards that reinforce progress toward that goal. The agent is in an environment which it observes and acts upon. A well-formed reinforcement learning problem has clear definitions for each of these bullets. Something that's important to understand is that ML Agents has sort of a hybrid architecture. The game or simulation environment is implemented in Unity. Tools for deep learning are most commonly accessed through a Python layer. ML Agents has both a Unity part and a Python part, and those two parts of ML Agents communicate and coordinate with each other. In this video, we will focus on the Unity part and how to set up an agent in Unity. For training the agent, you need to use the Python part of ML Agents. I will leave that for future videos. For this video, we will work with agents that have already been trained, so we can do that in Unity without using Python yet. First, let's install the Unity part of ML Agents and use that for the rest of this video. ML Agents itself is undergoing rapid development with new releases every month or so, so it's important to keep track of what version we are using. I will use Verified Package 1.0.8, which is the latest verified version at the time of making this video. That means that the Unity package version is 1.0.8 and the Python package version is 0.61.1. We need to make sure that we use those matching versions. To install the Unity package, create a new Unity project and choose a version of Unity that is at least Unity 2018.4. I am using Unity 2018.4.36. I will call the project ML Agents Example 1.0.8. Within Unity, open the Package Manager. We see the verified versions of ML Agents. Choose and install version 1.0.8. The installation takes a couple of minutes. After the installation, there's one error message appears. It seems as though we can just simply dismiss this. We also want to set up the examples that come with ML Agents. Unfortunately, these are not included in the Unity package that we just downloaded. We can get the examples together with lots of other artifacts by cloning the ML Agents GitHub repository. You need to have a Git client installed on your computer. There are many ways to do that. If you run Unity on Windows, one approach is to install Git from this site. I will leave the link in the description of this video. 
If you have questions about how to install Git, please leave me those questions in the comment section below. Once Git is installed, I'm going to use the Git Bash console, which provides Git commands in a Linux-like environment. I will create a subfolder under my Documents folder called ML Agents Verified 1.0.8. I navigate into this directory and then run the git clone command that is provided in the documentation. I then drag the examples folder from the path sh shown to the assets folder in the project window. Again, there is, there's an error in the console. It seems as though uh, this can be easily cleared. So now we have the ML agents examples in Unity and we can try running them. Let's take a look at what is probably the simplest example 3D ball. We see we have these cube guys who balance balls on their head. The example already has a trained neural net and is ready to run. If we click run, we see the cube guys are very good at balancing the balls on their head. This simulation has physics including gravity and the balls have mass. If the cube guys were less good at balancing the balls, the balls would easily just fall. How is this formulated as a reinforcement learning problem? Unity's documentation on the examples tells us this. I formatted the key elements in a table that might be a bit simpler to look at. So in this example, the agent is the cube guy. The environment is everything that's not the cube guy, which is the ball and the laws of physics. The goal is for the agent to balance the ball on its head for as long as possible. And then we will talk about the observations, actions, and rewards as we work through the example. Looking back at this cartoon structure for a neural network, remember that we are concerned with two different processes, training and inference. The more difficult process is training, where many random inputs are attempted. The outputs are compared with what we would hope they would be, or in the case of reinforcement learning, to the case where we get the best reward. And the process for training is to adjust the weights of the nodes to get the outputs we want for any given input. For the inference process, the network has already been trained and the node weights are no longer adjusted. The perceptions lead to decisions that lead to actions based on the already trained neural network. For both inference and training, we need to convert perceptions into a form the neural net will, will understand and also convert the neural net's output into actions in the Unity environment. We will talk about this next. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of how to create a machine learning agent in Unity ML Agents. There are simpler and more advanced options. In this video, we will show the simplest approaches, which still may not seem too simple if this is all new to you. If we look at the 3D ball example, each of the cube guys is an agent. The agent is together with the ball as sub-objects to a parent 3D ball object. The agent has some regular Unity objects for the cube and its decorations. It has a transform and a box collider, which are typical for Unity, and then it has a few new components, an agent script, 
a component called behavior parameters and a component called decision requester. The script is something the developer needs to implement and we will look at that in detail. The behavior parameters component helps map the Unity data to and from the neural network and the decision requester specifies that we want the agent to run in a loop and periodically receive perceptions, make a decision, and take actions. Let's look in more detail at each of these. For the agent script, you inherit from agent instead of mono behavior as you usually do in Unity. The agent class inherits from mono behavior, so your agent is still a mono behavior. You have several new agent methods that you will probably need to override, and we will talk about each of these. The first couple are for initialization. As you would guess, initialize is called when the agent is first initialized. In this case, it is setting some variables and parameters. You can think of an episode as a complete run of the game or simulation. On episode begin is therefore called at the beginning of a run. So in this case, the cube guy and ball are put into an initial state. Note there is some randomness in the cube guy's rotation and the ball's position. That helps with training so that each time the agent is trained, the situation is a bit different and the train model is not hard-coded to just one exact starting condition. So far, that is not too different from usual Unity development. Now let's talk about the concepts that are more specific for reinforcement learning. Perceptions, actions, and rewards. Looking again at our flowchart, perceptions need to be communicated from Unity to the neural network, which makes a decision and results in actions and rewards. Everything in the neural network is just data, so we need to translate perceptions from Unity objects to encoded data for the neural network, and then translate actions from the neural network, which, is, which are also encoded data, back to Unity where the actions can be performed. Let's look at the perceptions and how they are implemented for the 3D ball example. The agent script overrides the collect observations method. The method receives a vector sensor parameter, which has a method called add observation. This is where the agent's perceptions in Unity are translated to data that the neural network can process. Add observation can take different data types, including scalar numbers and vectors. For this example, add observation gets called four times with the cube guy's z and x rotation and the ball's position and velocity. Each of those last two are unity vector threes or three-dimensional vectors. So how much observation data is being collected? We have two scalars plus two 3D vectors for a total of eight floating point numbers. This is consistent with Unity's documentation for the 3D ball example. Remember that the agent also has this behavior parameters component, which specifies how the neural network connects to the agent. We notice that the vector observation section has eight for the space size, and we saw just now where that eight came from. Stacked vectors is set to one, which means that the neural network should only use the current observations rather than including the previous observations. There are additional options for perceptions, including raycasts and images. These are very interesting, very powerful. We will use them in the future, but the 3D ball example from Unity does not use those. Next, let's look at implementing actions and rewards. We see the 3D ball actions will be implemented as two numbers corresponding to the X and Z rotation of the cube guy. In other words, the action 
that the agent can take is to rotate in X and to rotate in Z. Looking again at the behavior parameters component, we see the vector action space size is 2, which corresponds to these two rotations, and these two numbers have continuous rather than discrete values, so the rotation angles can be any amounts. So we need these two output values from the neural network, and then there needs to be code that implements what the numbers mean in the Unity environment. If we now look at the agent script on action received method, we see that this function receives an array that in this case will have two elements for these X and Z rotations. This code then implements the rotations in Unity. The amount to rotate gets clamped to the range from negative 1 to positive 1. The units here are degrees, so these will just be small changes in rotation for each frame. There seem to be some tricks in the code, such as only increasing the rotation value if it, if it is already negative and vice versa. My guess is that these may have come from trial and error to get the ball balancing to work, but if anyone has more insight into the Unity example code, please leave a comment for, for this video. Then let's see how rewards are set. This code looks at the ball's position, and if it has fallen, we call the setReward function to set the reward to negative 1, meaning the cube guy dropped the ball and the episode ends in failure. The end episode function is called to stop the run. That's important, especially when the agent is being trained, because when the ball gets dropped, the episode ends and a new training episode begins. If the ball hasn't fallen, the reward is set to 0 0.1. It seems to me that instead of set reward, that add reward could have been used here to give a little reward for every time step that the cube guy continues to balance the ball. Set reward sets the reward to exactly that value, while add reward accumulates a running total reward value. And in fact, Unity's own documentation says that there's a reward for every step that the ball remains on its head, which would imply that add reward is used instead of set reward. So Unity's own documentation doesn't seem entirely consistent with the Unity sample code. Again, if anyone has any insight, please leave a comment. Finally, let's also look at the agent's heuristic function. Heuristic is a place where you can write your own code to make the decision as an alternative to having the neural network make the decision. A common way to use the heuristic function is to provide the decision from user input so that you or another human being makes the decision. The trick is that you need to use the same encoding as was used for on action received. So in this case, the heuristic function provides the same two numbers for the X and Z rotation that otherwise the neural network would have provided. And in the heuristic function, those numbers come from the horizontal and vertical input axes, which, for example, could come from your arrow keys. So as an example, I can go to the behavior parameters component for the first cube guy and change the behavior type to heuristic only. So in this case, I am controlling the rotation of this cube guy rather than the neural network controlling it. When I hit run, I'm controlling the guy's rotation using the arrow keys. And as you can see, I am not as good at balancing the ball as the neural network is. So all of that shows a simple case of how an agent is implemented in Unity ML Agents. If you would like to see a more interesting example, I recommend this course from Udemy called Reinforcement Learning AI Flight with Unity ML Agents. The course takes you through the entire process of building these artificially intelligent agent airplanes 
that can race through an obstacle course. Uh, I got a lot out of this course and would recommend it if you would like to see a more elaborate example fully worked out in, in complete detail. This video and the one that came before it have been my tutorial introduction to Unity ML Agents. I did not cover the training process which is done using the Python part of ML Agents. Instead, I will show that as I develop new ML Agents examples uh, based around humanoid NPCs. So more on the training process in upcoming videos. I hope you found this interesting. In my next video, let's start talking about how we would apply these concepts for reinforcement learning to humanoid NPCs. I can think of three different ways to approach this, and at least to me, one of those three approaches seems more promising than the other two, but that's just a guess until we try some experiments. If you would like to hear more about this as I make more of these videos and try some of these experiments to find the best way to develop intelligent NPCs, please do subscribe to this channel. My goal is to have an NPC driven by a neural network before too long.